Hi, I'm Harry Dodge. I have a uh, piece in the show. Uh, my piece is called Quanta. It's a big drawing from 2013, um, and it's in the next room. But the piece I'm going to talk about today is Jim Shaw's uh, big graphite piece called Dream Object. I was looking at drawings of successful businessmen, which became increasingly distorted and became a pornographic hedge. So this is a big multi-part graphite drawing by Jim Shaw. And in the show, it's sandwiched between Nalen Blake's erotic restraints piece and Barbara Smith's field piece. I just love looking at the Shaw next to these other pieces. These other works pressure the Shaw and to me provide a hilarious sort of wizened challenge to the meaning making machine in the big drawing. One thing that happens is the odd, awkward sexuality that's suggested becomes a kind of lighthearted common ground. So in the case of the title, the pornographic hedge would seem to be uh, the prime bounty. But in checking out this work, we're much more involved in the kind of distortion that's taking place with the gentlemen's faces. Then these techniques are treatments. They sort of come of age and strike me as effects menus in Photoshop like computer applications. In the title, Shaw refers to something he calls dream object. I like the smash up here of two words that contrast, dream and object. First you have dream, which people think of as kind of immaterial, kind of nighttime images that, you know, we're not even responsible for, nocturnal interlopers. And then you have the word object, um, which is sort of defined by this idea of materiality, um, edges, palpability. Now, in my own practice, I do a lot of thinking through deep materialism. It's one of the core questions that I'm working through. I find a lot of pleasure in thinking and making these things that I call thought objects, sort of objects made from thought, which suggests that either language is particulate, which I think it is, or that thoughts are particulate, and I think they are, or both. Shaw evokes all that stuff for me up front here as a sort of matrix onto which all of the other experiences of this piece fall afterward, like seeds. While I profoundly enjoy the work as an inappropriate, mildly sexual, funny thought object, it's also worth noting that when I was preparing to speak about it, I realized that either I hadn't looked or I just couldn't remember in the particular sex acts that had actually been happening in the pornographic hedge. Are they gay, straight, violent, vividly rendered, or urgent and sketchy? I was making notes for the interview and I had jotted down pornographic shrub. The comedy in that could feed me for a week. It's a winner and touchable to me, palpable as a thought object. Plus, honestly, a lot of people do have sex in shrubs. I mean, I've always thought of wilderness as a sort of mood killer, but um, I guess I could get used to meeting strangers in shrubbery in order to get off. I get used to it, but then of course it would probably stop being funny. <laughs>